This is Nick Douglas for Musto Mornings in Cows Week for 2019. I have here on my left Hugh Brayshaw. We've levelled out a little bit today, Hugh. I'm loving this. Yeah, I think uh, I was a bit worried I'd be out of shot today. So uh, we've come down to the same level. I think it's safe. And while we're talking about being on the same level today, Slingsby Ladies' Day at Cows Week, celebrating women in sailing and especially giving them, I guess, roles that are quite powerful as well and seeing all those ladies out on the helm and everyone wearing their navy blue and white stripes. Where are your navy blue and white stripes? I'm sorry. Yeah, I wouldn't want to show, show anyone up today. It's your day. <laughs> it, it's our day, though. It's fantastic. But we do have some lovely navy and white stripes going on over here with this jacket. Do you want to tell me a little bit about this as we can hear the rain on the musto tent here in the Yacht Haven? So we have a nice uh, long sleeve white shirt under here, Hugh. Yeah, this is the Sun Shield top, um, UPF 30, so great for when the sun comes out this afternoon, which we're, fingers crossed it does do that. Um, and yeah, you obviously got to protect yourself. And then shorts, I think it may be a little bit chilly this morning, but we're hoping it warms up, so yeah. And the guy's sporting a nice little vest here, Hugh. Yeah, showing off the uh, the merchandise kit with a bit of the uh, Cowsbeak logo and, and, and the year, so you can uh, yeah tell everybody you've been here at 2019. I really like the navy as well. Here's the navy in white. This is the option you should be wearing. <laughs> is it? Well, I've got a bit of navy on today. <laughs> Fantastic. I really love lumping these things on him. So I really like this jacket and I want to try it on. And I know that we're not going to get your shirt off, but maybe we can get a vest on. So you'll see that there's one I prepared earlier. And in three, two, one, I'm going to race you to put on the merch that's on the mannequins. Okay. Three, two, one. This looks awesome. I'm loving this. Oh, see, look, you could wear you could wear the girls' jacket and get your stripes on. <laughs> yeah, no, <sorry. laughs> but speaking of ladies, Slingsby Ladies' Day reception is at Northwood House tonight. The trophy was actually first awarded in 2006 to celebrate women and their achievements and those inspiring women. Nikki Henderson, she was the youngest to complete the clipper around the world ocean race last time around. She is nominated as well as Hannah Mills, who's just taken out her second world championship in the 470 class. She's a musto ambassador through the British sailing team. And then the third nominee is Lucy McGregor. She has just won her fourth match racing world championship just two days ago in Lucille, Sweden. So uh, yeah, she's also a friend of musto. So very, very cool to be celebrating these women. Oh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah, all done ma amazingly well, yeah. And I believe you're going to talk to uh, an amazing female sailor, Hannah Diamond, who's at Caswick this week. Yeah, in general, just an amazing sailor. Hannah Diamond's going to be on, uh, on soon and we can ask her some pretty big questions, hopefully. I love the way Hugh said that. In general, just an amazing sailor. Fantastic to be here on Ladies' Day. More coming up in just a minute. Uh, so, hashtag in my element, Hugh, have, be, have you been using that? Uh, yeah, a little bit so far. <laughs> I think it's uh, only, only early days, but we should see more of that. Yeah, fantastic. And these beautiful photos by Sean Roster. Everyone got out to race yesterday. Tricky conditions, but racing for both black and white group, which was great to see, as you can see some examples here, by Sean Roster. Then everyone was in the Yacht Haven, Hugh, having a great time at the Musto stage. Uh, yeah, I think we could hear it all around town, kind of up and down the high street. People were having a great time. So, uh, yeah, I'm very happy with, uh, with that. Now, talking about mastering the elements, Hugh, I've just popped over to musto.com and you can see this amazing web page here. There's a video that's going to launch today, I believe. Yeah, it actually, it's going to be a really nice video. So you head over to the website and, um, and check that out. With, uh, if you've got something better than our uh, dodgy, dodgy internet, you can, uh, you can check out a really, really nice video. Yeah, it should be good. I mean, not everybody can be here in Cowsweek having fun on the water and in the bar. So you can still be tweeting with hashtag in my element as long, along with everybody here at Cowsweek too. Remember to wear your stripes today and enjoy Slingsby Ladies Day. And I think we'll go on, go on over to your interview with Hannah. Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's see what she's uh, getting up to this year. So we are here with Hannah Diamond, um, former British sailing team sailor and Volvo Ocean Race sailor, um, now sailing on a Fast 40 for Cows Week. Um, which, uh, which 40 are you on this week? I'm sailing with Redshift Fast 40, uh, so we're in IRC Zero this week. Okay, cool. And what's your role on, on this boat? I do upwind trim, 
um, and I've been doing that all year, so it's great to be here having a bit more of a kind of relaxed week um, outside of our Fast 40 events. Oh, brilliant. And how's, how's it been going so far? I've only had, I guess, one or two days racing? Yes, yeah, so it was a bit of a shame that the first day was cancelled, um, but definitely far too windy. Um, and then we unfortunately retired on Sunday from racing, um, but we won yesterday, so we're pretty happy with that. It was quite a long race, and we were behind until probably a mile before the finish, so it was really nice to get the win um, and hopefully do the same today. And also, what did you do to get past in, in the end? Well, we... Um, the breeze was shifting left as the sky was clearing and the rain was going away and we came from Brown down to the finish uh, of the squadron line and uh, the breeze was going left and left and left. We were kind of on the outside of it and I think we were a little bit faster, just a little bit more patient with that shift and managed to play the pressure really well. We literally sailed outside, around the outside of everyone. so. Pretty nice, very satisfying on the water. Oh, it's nice, yeah, when, that, when that's you. So on that, actually, the conditions for the day, have you looked at what the weather might be and what your priorities might be for the day? Well, being waterproof, I think, is going to be a big part of today. Um, it's such a shame that it's so rainy at the moment, but um, I think it's supposed to clear yeah. up a bit later. We should have kind of 10, 12 knots um, as this rain clears through. Maybe a little bit more rain later on, but uh, hopefully you know, the breeze is good enough to get racing and then the rain becomes almost irrelevant at that point. Yeah, exactly. And, and you kind of go out in the water talking about priorities and kind of what you want, want to work on for the day? Yeah, so we are really lucky we sail um, with this team. You know, we've been sailing all season together, uh, so we've got quite good routines and how we set the boat up and how we approach the racing, which is really nice. It's taken quite a long time to get to that, and I think as you gel as a team, you just kind of streamline those priorities and you can really make sure that you're focusing on the right things at the right time. So I think today we'll make sure that we've got the right sails ready to go. We have to carry all of our sails that we're going to use this week all day, which is unusual for us. Um, so we'll just make sure that we've got the right sails on deck for start time and make sure that we've got access to the ones that we'll need next because we, you know, this racing is a bit different for us. Normally we do windward lures and maybe one coastal race. Um, we could be putting up all different kinds of combinations of sails, so we've got to make sure that we're ready for anything. Oh yeah, really good tip. Yes, make sure you've got your sails ready for, um, for yeah, early on in the day. Um, and then you've, uh, you did a bit of sailing on, in the King's Cup on, uh, with, with Bear Grylls. How was he to sail with? He was awesome. And actually, I think we didn't realise at the time, but I think we had a bit of an advantage in that he didn't know how to sail. He grew up in the Isle of Wight. Yeah. And so we could use the language that we use on board the boat anyway, rather than have to, having to change that, um, which definitely helped us as the crew on board. And he picked up the racing really, really quickly. And the biggest thing for us was that he wasn't phased by approaching the group of boats, we hoisted our spinnaker on a downwind start while everyone else was still sat with their jib up, um, kind of stemming the tide. Um, and I think a lot of people would have found that quite daunting and he wasn't phased by it at all. Um, and that's kind of what gave us the advantage to win those two races. Oh, brilliant. And it's not just the inshore sailing that you've been doing. You recently came from a pretty successful fast net race. Shorthanded this time, you've made a bit of tra transition to that. How does it compare to your last fast net? So the last fast net I did was... Um, on the Volvo 65, part of Leg Zero for the Volvo Ocean Race. Um, and that was a real baptism of fire for me. It was my first race on, on those kind of boats. I'd done my trial, which was a transatlantic, which uh, was quite full on. But then to put us next to the other boats that we're going to be racing all the way around the world with, that was the first time that we'd all lined up together. Um, and then kind of just as I'd got comfortable in that environment, I've decided to change a little bit again and do some double-handed sailing. Um, and so, yeah, there's just... There's so much to learn, um, and I've been saying to a few people who I've seen around this week who I haven't seen in a while, that actually double-handed sailing doesn't really exist. It's single-handed sailing with a little bit of sleep um, because you're on deck on your own pretty much all of the time. Um, so I've just had a huge amount to learn, um, and it's been great, and there's just so much more to learn. <laughs> Excellent. Well, it's nice to hear. You're looking forward to a bit more, a bit more of that. Um, well, on the on the Volvo Ocean Race stuff, um, you you haven't spent much time offshore relatively. And we had Ian Walker on yesterday, who has obviously spent a lot of time in, in the Southern Ocean. How was that kind of feeling, being in that exposed in that in that sort of environment? I think I was really lucky to have an amazingly experienced crew with me. I was by far the least experienced on my boat, um, which was it, it did make it a little bit more daunting because they. Uh, had a huge expectation of me um, at that point but I think um, it's a real team effort when you're in conditions that are that rough um, we had 
so much wind. We had kind of over 30 knots for 12 days and then up to 50, 60 knots at times. And the, the power that's carried in the swell is just so incredible. And I always read the books when I was a kid about people writing about the Southern Ocean. And they were always talking about the size of the waves. And I was looking around thinking, they don't look that big. And it's actually nothing to do with the size of them. It's the amount of energy that they carry in them that's the scary thing. You're just such on the whim of the direction of the wave rather than um, being controlled by the wind, which is what we're obviously used to sailing by. Yeah. Um, so that was something that was really different. And it was an amazing experience, but not something you could just do again and again and again. It's something really special. Yeah. Um, and you have to respect the elements when you're down there. Yeah, and did, did you ever feel like with those 50, 60 knots and those huge waves, did you, did you ever feel out of control and kind of how did you deal with that if you, if you did? I think I'd say there were definitely times where the boat really felt like we were on the edge um, and that's what the Volvo Ocean Race is all about. It's about pushing the limits and you've got to be pushing harder than everyone else if you want to win. Um, so there's definitely an element of feeling on the limit. Um, I think it was a massive lesson to me in teamwork you can't do anything on boats that size on your own so to have people around me who I really trusted um, you have to have trust in every single person on board um, and that's kind of what pulls you through you're just really relying on the other people and you know that the equipment's in good enough shape to get you through yeah oh, really interesting um, and then I mean, for people watching this or people kind of watching your sailing in general, you've made an amazing kind of transition from dinghies into, into kind of big boats sort of in, into that sort of world. How would you, if you looked back at yourself, kind of went back in time and talked to yourself, how would you give yourself any more, more tips or any kind of people doing it? Would you give them some tips you've learnt? Um, that's a hard question, <laughs> I think, because I still feel like I'm kind of in the middle of my journey. You yeah. know, I've still got so much more to learn and I feel so lucky to have had the experiences that I have had so far and been involved in the boats that I have been up to this day. Um, I was very lucky that I grew up in Warsash, so around the Solent, where I was surrounded by big boat sailing, and I was kind of the odd one out doing dinghy sailing. My family are very much big boat sailors, um, and I was kind of sure when I was younger that the Olympic pathway was where I wanted to go, um, and I was very kind of sure that that's what I wanted to do, and it was kind of a chance turn of events that I ended up coming into big boat sailing and then the timing of the crew rules for the Volvo Ocean Race meant that that's kind of where I've stayed but I think uh, being willing to learn every role on the boat um, I think you have to have a really um, strong fundamental understanding of all of the roles um, good foundation and then the hardest thing I found is picking something to specialize in um, which has been hard because I enjoy doing all of it but um, becoming an expert in one particular role on the boat so I think if you can always try to be the worst sailor on the boat that you sail on and learn from other people around you that's got to be a good place to start yeah that's some really good tips there I think with uh, um, yeah trying to learn as much as you can and then specialize and that's a really good idea we've got a few um, quick fire questions from from people that have brought them in um, uh, I hope you're ready for this so what is your favorite class of sailing boat to sail oh that's a really hard one <laughs> Um, I'm loving the Fast 40s at the moment, it's such close racing and uh, Redshift are having a great season so it's really nice to be part of that. Okay, cool Class 40. Uh, Favourite location to sail? Oh, these are hard. Um, Takapuna in New Zealand, I did the Laser Radio Worlds almost 10 years ago oh, there wow. but just an amazing venue and an amazing place on shore as well. Oh, brilliant, nice different one. Uh, and finally, do you have a favourite song to sail to? No. <laughs> um, I don't normally listen to music when I was sailing, but actually when we were doing the Fastnet, um, when there was just me on deck, I was actually thinking it would be really nice to have uh, some kind of music in the background just to keep you, well, keep you awake sometimes, yeah. getting pretty tired and sleep deprived. Yeah, so pack you up a bit. I think I'm going to have to pick a song and start listening to that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, brilliant. Well, thanks for coming on and have a great day sailing. Uh, and to everyone else at Cow's Week, um, enjoy, the, uh, enjoy the weather. I hope the rain clears up soon and um, have a great day. Okay, hey everyone, we are with the uh, Turner Twins. Um, for those of you that, uh, that, that haven't kind of come across them before, they're not, they're not massive sailors, um, but they're kind of experienced a bit of Cow's Week uh, this week. Um, how's, your, uh, how's your Cow's Week been so far? Cow's Week's been, uh, it's been pretty interesting for us. I mean, we've been camping in this weather, so firstly, that hasn't been great out in, uh, out in the wind and the rain, but um, yeah, we've experienced uh, a bit of uh, on-water action on the shore um, and just soaked up the atmosphere this week, which has been amazing already. 
And, I, and as I should say, um, I should probably try and get you to introduce yourself to, to, to everybody. Um, yeah, what is it that you, uh, what you guys get up to? Uh, so we are um, pioneering um, world first adventurers. So we try to push the boundaries of modern exploration. Um, lots of things have been done before. We all know that from the poles to Everest. So we're looking at our adventures in a very different way and what we can give back, how we can improve the way we travel, etc. So. Ah, fan fantastic. And so you've so you've been on yeah, you've been on some adventures already. Any any kind of obviously we love the weather here and um, <laughs> cows and sailors in general. We love weather. Is, have you had kind of some serious conditions on some of these adventures? Yes, we uh, we rode and sailed the Atlantic back in 2011, 2012. So that was uh, what our first ever experience on a, in an ocean crossing. And to to row it was pretty phenomenal i know we've got a rowing boat behind there so you're pretty exposed to the elements and then obviously sailing's kind yeah. of a whole another kettle of fish so yeah i mean how did you find the sail you were the sail was fantastic um we had 41 days in a little rowing boat where it was kind of six feet wide nowhere to really move or walk and then sailing back um from the caribbean to plymouth was just a dream it was so nice we, got, we had huge waves we had a 65 knots of wind in the Bay of Biscay, had to head for Portugal. Um, and it was just the, the bow was smashing into the weather, the waves, and then it would just get sucked off. It never landed, and it was just a surreal moment where you're looking at all the elements going, I have no control. I'm just trying to control as much of the controllables and variables. We were doing, I think, 15 knots in a 40 ton boat with just the uh, storm stay up. It was incredibly exciting. But yeah, it's, the, it's on that balance <laughs> between kind of being totally out of control and in control and there's a lovely lovely balance when you find it of controlling that environment and that sail it was great oh, that's really interesting i guess you've gone all that way and you're getting close to close to land and then suddenly you get hit, hit by that how, uh, how how did you deal with that kind of mentally uh, well Ro ross was the one that sailed i didn't sail so he was the one that sailed i i rode but um i, I think the, mentally it was uh, the row hammered any um insecurities any confidence issues you had out on the ocean um, and then the sail back was actually fairly fairly gentle compared to the row just because yeah we're the boat was three times as big the um, yeah the safety element we all had much more room we had railings etc um, and it did yeah you know the row is pretty pretty extreme when a small kind of four meter wave crashes over your boat it's batting the hatches and you get pushed down under the wave and then you come back up where the sailing boat just crashes over and then washes off the back. So, um, yeah, it was it was interesting. I I don't know whether I enjoyed the row or the sail more because they never crossed an ocean and the row was so immersive. It was beautiful. It really was man versus the elements. But the sail was, yeah, I really want to sail around the world now. <laughs> right, well, yeah, have you got um, some big adventures coming up sailing around the world or something else you've got in the in the books? Uh, yeah, so our, our plan is to um, reach Point Nemo, which for those that don't know is the furthest point away from land. So we're um, trying to reach all the world's uh, poles of inaccessibility. Um, and so, yeah, throughout the uh, last few years, we've been trying to reach all the continental poles of inaccessibility. And in a few years' time, yeah, we want to reach Point Nemo. So we need to get a boat, get some experience on the water, etc. So that'll be uh, yeah, the next challenge. Oh, fantastic, and that's good to uh, you're good, good here with there, and I should be taking you out sailing, I think, uh, later on today. Or, um, so yeah, thanks very much for coming along um, and and talking to us about that, um, and uh, we'll catch up with everybody um, later on.